Uh-oh. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the another edition of Big Ooh's Top 20 Countdown. This week we're counting down the top 20 urban AC songs according to who? Uh, BDS.com. Plus, we're talking to our guest, Phil, aka Midnight from the from the uh what you call it, Midnight Poets. You guys, <laughs> let's get into the number 20 song. The number 20 song is absolutely one of my favorites. It's by Tyga and Chris Brown. This song is called Nasty. Let's get into a nasty by Tiger and Chris Brown on Big Old Stop 20 Countdown. Yeah, you guys, that was a number 19 song, Metro Booming, Creeping, featuring The Weeknd and 21 Savage. We're talking to our guest, Phil, aka Midnight. How you doing, brother? Man, brother, I'm doing good, man. I'm doing good Friday night after a long work week. It's all good, you know? Yeah. Tell my listeners about yourself. Oh, man, what is there? Well, I'm originally from Brooklyn, New York, by way of Jamaica, West Indies. And uh, I've been doing poetry for a long time. I mean, over 40 years of writing and performing, being on stage. Wow. That long. Wow. What made you get into poetry? Uh, Well, actually, it was funny because it was a class assignment in seventh grade. Uh, there's an art art class with Miss Gynecopolis. Okay. And we had a, you had to write a poem and draw a picture. Mm, okay. And so I, I ended up drawing, a, I mean, I can't draw a trust. I can't draw. But I wrote a poem and I drew a picture. And the mm. funny thing, somewhere around here, I got that picture. Oh, no, it's at my desk at work. Crap. Mm. I, got, I still got that little picture that I drew. Uh, at my desk at work. Wow. Yeah, I, I, well, it's not this, I reenacted the picture, of course, recreated it. Okay. Okay. What was the name of your first poem? Childhood Thoughts. Hmm. Hmm. Do, do you remember how it went? Uh, that, that, I'll, I'll remember that poem on my deathbed, bro. Okay. <laughs> Say a little bit of it. Say a little bit of it. I mean, it's short. It's short and to the point. So the picture that I drew was a picture of a little boy hoping and thinking that he'd be rich one day. Mm -hmm. And then, and I had a then picture and then a now picture. And the now picture was the little boy um, on an unemployment line. Mm. And the crazy full circle of that is that I work in the welfare department now. Wow. And it's crazy. That's how it, you know, became full circle in a crazy way. But um, the childhood thoughts, it's short. Wait. I was 12, you know. Once upon a time, I thought the world were mine, but I was only four and thought that every door would open up, would open up to me and life would be carefree. Now that I am an adult, I can clearly see that life just isn't so. And that's it. Wow. You wrote that when you were just 12 years old. Yep. Wow. Yeah, cool. Yeah, the first time I was on the mic was February 1st, 1980. 1980? Mm-hmm. Oh, that was a couple months before I was born. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wow. I got it like that. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I'm sorry. I'm aging you a little bit, but... <laughs> it's all good. And hey, neither right. one of us look it, so what's the problem, right? Yeah, that's the truth. That's the honest to God truth. That is you and you're not lying about that. But you guys are going to talk more to our guests at um, midnight. But you guys, let's get into this countdown. The number 18 song comes from Drake and 21 Savage. This song is called Spin Bout You. Let's get into a Spin Bout You on Big Woo's Top 20 Countdown, baby. Yeah. Yeah, you guys, that was the number 17 song, Little Baby, Forever 2022, featuring Friday. And we're talking to our guest, Midnight. Midnight, you also, uh, so from there, you decided to make it to start doing poetry as, as, as a hobby or career. What, what, what was the story behind that? I, I think it was just a, a way of expression. I had a, mm-hmm. a cousin of mine who was also a poet. He mm-hmm. was a um, guidance counselor in, in Brooklyn, New York. Mm-hmm. And so he had a lot to write about. And he would he, sometimes he had me read some of his poems and it's like, man, that's amazing. So the uh, it's crazy. One of my favorite poems that he wrote was in 1972. Hmm. And 
the crazy thing about it is so this what he wrote in 72 is still the same problems we have here in 2023. Wow. Yeah. Wow, that's crazy. Wow. And then from there you decided to like keep on going. And then and then you decided to start the, your group that you have right now. What's the name of your group? The Zoom group. Uh, the, the Zoom, well, the Zoom group happened, it was um it's put in, in the chat. <clears throat> So when COVID season started, the height of COVID season, we couldn't go anywhere. So mm -hmm. I decided one day, I said, I'm going to do a birthday party, so to speak, on Zoom with mm -hmm. different poets and everything like that. So I did that. And after I did the, the Zoom birthday party, I was like, you know what? Let's just do this every second and fourth Wednesday of the month, 915 Eastern time. And that's what we do. Wow, that is so cool. We're, 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 have you hosted other events before this, or was it just like? No, I've I've hosted a number of events. I've I've, I've done workshops in high schools, middle schools, um, jails. I, I've done a number of things. Wow, what made you get into hosting? Seeing other people hosting, like uh. -uh. I don't know. It's just, it's just something. I mean, you just, when you get on the mic, it's it's just exciting and whatnot, and boom, it, you just take it from there. And so uh, it, there was when I moved here in Colorado in two thousand six. Mm. There wasn't a lot of poetry here, mm. so there was this one guy. Um, I can't remember his name. All of a sudden. But he used to live in Denver, and he would come down every Monday and and do and do host an event. Mm. But and then I would go I would go to this one spot in Denver and perform. Okay. But the winters here are kind of interesting. So when the winter weather rolled around, I was like, you know what? We can't get up to Denver like we want to. So mm. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring it here, and okay. boom. I'll I'll start hosting events down here in in the springs. Oh, that is so cool! That is so cool. You know, you said you're from. How did you get from Brooklyn all the way to Colorado? That's a hell of a move. Well, I was I I was in Brooklyn for the first twenty three years of my life, mm -hmm. and then uh, I, I had befriended a, a buddy of mine who moved from Minnesota to New York. We became good friends. And in one, one year he was like, hey, I'm going to visit my family. You want to come through? So I went to visit Minnesota. Eventually he, 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 eventually he moved out of New York and we got married. And he's like, hey, when, when he was getting married, he's like, hey, I want you to be in my wedding. And then and I was like, you know what? It's time to experience life. I'm, I'm going to get out of New York and uh, go experience life. So I moved. I was in his wedding and I moved to Minnesota at the same time. Then after my divorce, I had the option of Texas back to New York, which would have been a bad idea at the time, or here in Colorado, and I chose Colorado. Why, why would you say going back to New York would have been a bad idea? Well, after a divorce to go back home and cut up, that was not a smart idea. That would have mm -hmm. been a smart idea. Mm -hmm. I, I'll be honest with me, I would have cut up, trust. Wow, you would have been all over the place. Wow. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm not mad at you. I'm sorry that, that the divorce happened, but you know. No, it's all good. I didn't wake up to her this morning. I'm good. <laughs> oh, wow. wow. That's it's, been 20, it's been 20, it's been 20, this year makes 20 years since I've been divorced. Wow. I guess, I guess it's a good thing. I guess if it's, if you're happy, that's a, it's always a good thing if you're happy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I always tell people that I'm happily divorced too. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, man. But you guys are going to talk more to our guests midnight, but let's get back in this countdown. The number 16 song comes from Coco Jones. The song is called I See You. Let's go into it. I See You by Coco Jones on Big Old Stop 20 Countdown. Yeah, you guys, that was the number 15 song, Summer Walker with Karma. And it's time to go into the extra song of the week. The extra song of the week comes from a good friend to the show. I always promised him I would play this song. It's been months since the song came out, but I'm going to play it today. This song is called Slideshow by our friend Gabriel Wolf. Let's get into it. The extra song of the week 
Gabriel Wolf with Slideshow on Big Ol's Top 20 Countdown. Yeah, you guys, that was Gabriel Wolf with Slideshow, one of my great songs. We're talking to our guest, uh, Midnight. And so you now you have, is this your first book that you have out now? This is my first book. I, I've done little chat books before. And, you know, local, hey, take this, I don't care. But this is, this is my first book. And why did you come out with it right now? You could, why, why did you wait so long to come out with it? You know what? This was the perfect time in, in a weird, crazy way. This was the idea time because my mentor, uh, Stacy Dyson, mm -hmm. I, I was thinking about doing some other books before. And one of the books that I was going to release, she like, you know, it, that might not be the, the first book you want to put out there because it would typecast you because it, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a it's a strong message in the book. And that book is actually, um, I mean, excuse me, that particular poem is one poem and I have over 200 responses from that one, one poem of people's opinions. And the wow. poem is about um, my eight and a half year failed marriage. Wow, okay. So it was, it, it was too strong to come out as an opening and mm. And it just took years and um, my buddy Chance and I, we were approached by a publishing company in Florida, and excuse me, in California. Mm -hmm. And then we, cause they, they the, the, that publishing company, they, they're authors of short story authors. So mm -hmm. this is the first time they was gonna do poetry as, mm -hmm. as far as books for poetry. And then boom, we, we jumped on the opportunity. What's the name of your book? What's it all for? What's it all for? I want the meaning behind that title, man. I want the I want the title meaning. What's what's the why do you title the book like that? Well, the reason I titled What's It All For, it was uh the first time my father saw me perform. Mm -hmm. uh, he we were driving back home. He was like, that was good. I enjoyed it. And his rhetorical question was, What's it all for? Mm -hmm. So you explain it. You know what? I want you to like get get a poem out of the book. I want you to recite a poem when we come back. I want you to get, get your poem together because I want you to recite it when I come back. One of the poems, one of your favorite poems from the book. I want you to, to recite it when we come back. Is that cool? I, I'm going to get a bottle of water because water is medicine and I'm gonna, I'll be right back with you, brother. Okay, let's get, so let's get into the number 14 song. Number 14 song is by N.L. E, this song, that song was called Choppa. Let's get into it. Choppa by NLE uh, on Big Old Stop 20 Countdown. Yeah, you guys, we did three in a row for you. We did NLE, Choppa, we'll do it again, featuring Too Rare. Number 13 was Hit Kid, Choppa, Boy Up, featuring Gloss Up. And number 12 was SZA with Kill Bill. Now it's time to get, get into the Comedy Corner. The Comedy Corner is by one of my very, very favorite comics. His name is Shang. He's a really famous comic. He's a really awesome comic and one of my favorites. So let's get into it. The comedy of Shang on uh, Big Old Stop 20 Countdown. Mm -hmm. All right, you guys, that was the, the comedy corner. Oh, we're back with our guest, Phil, AKA Midnight. Brother. What's up, man? Ready? I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. You ready yeah, I did a. A release party last week Friday okay and it was interesting because what I did was every 30 minutes there's a, a different group that came in okay and so I did 30 minutes and I decided you got to read the room when you when uh different people are coming in yeah so instead of I did six shows every half hour so instead of doing a set Mm -hmm. I pretty much asked them to give me a theme and I went with it. Oh, okay. And, and that was fun. Yeah. That was fun because I ended up doing stuff I never, I usually don't do. I'm like, oh man, I, I don't really do that poem. Well, I like how you smoothly uh, changed hats while you were, while you were talking. <laughs> I can tell you a reason why I change as well, if you're interested. No, let me know. Let me know. So usually on stage when I perform, mm -hmm. 
Um, my father passed away November 5th, 2010. Yeah, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, you, I mean, life have none of us leave here alive, correct? That's true. So on his birthday, March 25th, 2011, mm -hmm. I did a show for him. Okay. And that show, I decided, like, you know what? I'm not going to charge anybody. I'm not going to charge for the show because I don't want to make I don't want to make a money off of my father like that. Yeah. So um, what I did on that show and what I've done performing since then mm -hmm. is wh whenever I perform, I either change my shirts or change my hats because I change my shirts and my hats when I'm on stage. But it's his shirts that I wear mm. mostly when I did when I did that show for him I wore his shirts oh wow during the performance so since um November, uh, March 25th 2011 I changed out my clothes and and I changed shirts and hats and so he's like with me all the time that's awesome I'm not I'm gonna change my shirt today I'm on screen you know but no. <laughs> I mean, you've you come to put in the chat. Shirts, we both have sweatshirts on. It's oh, yeah. crazy. That's crazy. Yeah, you've come to put in a chat and you've seen me come back with something different. Yeah. Some of the time you wear you were tank tops. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because it's hot. <laughs> it's hot. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, because you're in the air condition. Oh wow, okay. Yes. Yeah. That is wow. Wow. You ready to spit the poem? Okay, I'll spit something. This is this is um, I'll spit this one. The, um, this is usually an opening piece that I do. Um, I want to thank you all for coming, because the only thing that a poem wants is to be heard. But I dare you to listen. Pay more than the usual attention. Become the intervention that can help teach our adolescents. You see, some of our teenagers have gone astray. Internally, they feel a certain way. Confusion meets depression. I heard it's been said that absent fathers still teach vital lessons. And bullying gives you the personal view that you're less desirable, a powerless individual. Teens succumb to sex, drugs, and drinking, giving way to suicidal thinking. And that, that's just the beginning. Rap lyrics are winning. Clipping and I ain't got to get mine replacing real dreams with the dreams of selling drugs. Being put in the street life at 13, not sure if you live to see the age of 14. And parents, some parents aren't even parenting because they too are still children. So I dare you to listen. To the boys that buy pants that don't fit so that they can fit in. To the children that have the delusion that it's cute to wear high heels, tight jeans, and makeup. Little girls that envy adult women, underestimating the power of flirtation. In the meantime, you have grown men that want to fulfill these desires. When these desires become fertile, it gives birth to sin. But we can still teach our children, even when they're not listening, hoping one day they will remember, instilling them self-esteem, morality, and life's realities. Teach them spirituality that can be passed on from generation to generation after generation. Again, I want to thank you all for coming. Because the only thing that a poem wants is to be heard. But I dare you, I dare you, I dare you to listen. I like that. Step, 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 step. That was really good. Well, is that is that poem in your book? That poem is in, in my book. And I wrote that poem purposely to create a workshop around it. Oh, OK. So it, it has a lot of double meaning to it. Wow, that is, man, that was really, really good. How many poems are in the book? How many? I don't even know. Um, <laughs> how many poems are in here? There's, I'm, I'm going to tell you this. Mm -hmm. In most cases, a poetry book is about 50, 100 pages, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. This is like an autobiography of me, of life, me performing, experiences, et cetera. There's 253 pages in this book. Wow, that's a lot. Yeah, because I, well, it was, I figured like, if I'm going to exit left one day. I want mm -hmm. people to know I was here. Yeah. So in the, but at the same time, in the book, there's four different poems, which leads to four other books. Oh, okay. So, you know, I love a haiku, so there's haiku in there. So there'll be a haiku book coming. 
Uh, the, okay. other, the other poem that I, it'll be haiku with illustrations. Okay. Uh, the, other, the poem that I said is, uh, explains my eight and a half year marriage. Uh -huh. That poem is in there, with, but the book is with over 200 responses. Wow. Okay. Um, there, there's, there's, a, there's four poems that begins a, a story that I told in 24 poems. The first four of those poems are in the book. So that makes another book. Wow. And then, then the last poem in my book, in the last poem in Chance book, is the same poem because we wrote it together. So we're gonna mm -hmm. do a book together on different topic, different topics from our own perspectives. Okay, so when is that one gonna be released? We don't know. That's gonna that's gonna take a while. We mm -hmm. we've uh, I think we've written five poems together so far. Okay. Either they're either collabs or the same theme and our perspective on on from that theme. Oh, okay. Well, it's going to be, I think this is really going to be a good, great book. Yeah. I would think it's going to be real good. Great. But, but you guys, let's get back into this countdown. The number 11 song is by Lola Brooke. This song is called Don't Play With Me, featuring Billy B. Let's get into it. Number 11, Lola Brooke, Don't Play With Me, featuring Billy B. On Big, woo, Stop 20 Countdown. Y'all know I stole that from Soul Train. <laughs> yeah, you guys, that was a number 10 song. That song was called by Tim's. It was called Three Minds. Really one of my favorites on this countdown. But you guys, it's time to get into the second extra song of the week. The second extra song of the week, another song from uh, Gabe Walker's EP. This song is called Broken Glass. It's really one of my favorites by him. Let's get into it. Broken Glass by Gabe Wolf on Big Old Stop 20 Countdown. Yeah, you guys, that was the awesome, awesome second extra song of the week. And we're talking to our awesome guest. Uh, midnight, midnight. So you you already got plans for the second book. When do you know when the second book is going to be released? Uh, we're trying to, trying to. I'm not sure yet. We're trying to. Since it's going to be uh, haiku with illustrations, mm -hmm. the, the aim the aim is the end of uh, November, so it could be ready for the holidays. Oh wow, that is so cool! I can't wait. Yeah. I can't wait to see. It. Is is your book available? Your the current book is it available uh, everywhere? Amazon, all that stuff, and yeah, it's it's available on Amazon, and uh, it should be on Barnes and Noble as well. Uh, there's there's a there's a slight glitch with the Amazon right now because for some reason, uh, when you type in my name, you got to go through a filter in order to get it. You got to go to books. And then type it in. You know, just type it in my name. But this is the um, this is the book right here. What's okay. it all for? What's it all for? I like that cover. That cover is really cool. Thanks. Ooh, that's a really cool cover. Um, what's it all for? Wow, I like that. I like that title. And shout out your publisher. Shout out your publisher. Hawaga Publishing out of Cal Half Moon Bay in California. Um, Stephanie that hosts. Put in the chat with Chance and I. She's she's the part of the publishing company. Oh, that is so cool! Yeah. Wow. Once he hooked you up, wow, it pays to have friends. And <laughs> who you telling, right? It, it, it's crazy because it, it's pretty much the silver lining of COVID season. Yeah, yeah. And so you so you don't uh, host put in the chat by yourself. You have it with three. What made you put? What made you choose like uh, two other friends? It just made sense. Um, it, it made sense because somebody would get tired of hearing my voice. Yeah. <laughs> and Ch Chance and I, we just have a, 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 a chemistry that's like, wow, OK, these guys got mad chemistry. So it just made sense. And then Stephanie, she's the balance. She balances it all out. You know, yeah, I got to calm down a little bit. And you know, Chance. He, although he lives in Florida, he's originally from he's he's Bronx. I'm yeah. Brooklyn, so Bronx and Brooklyn butt heads. So we got to bring that out all the time. Wow! How long have you been knowing uh, Chance and Stephanie? The the funny thing, um, matter of fact, real quick, the 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 last poem in in the book, like I said, mm -hmm. it's it's a collaboration. It's mm -hmm. me, it's myself, Chance, and Stephanie. Oh, okay. 
Um, be, so the last poem in the book is entitled Native Tongue. So when you get the book, it'll make sense, Native Tongue. She's from the Philippines. He's, he's from Colombia. Um, my background is Jamaica, West Indies. So it makes sense with the title. Um, so what happened was COVID season, I went on a, a online open mic and met Stephanie. Mm -hmm. And then I started, I wanted to do this open, keep going with an open mic and I asked her to help me host. Mm -hmm. And then after that, uh, I had met, here's the crazy thing, Chance and I have never met each other. Are you serious? Yeah. Chance and I have never met each other. Um, people always thought we were like, oh, y'all known each other for years. I'm like, dude, I, we don't, I don't know this dude. He doesn't know me. Wow. So we it don't know, know each other at all. Huh? Wow. It seems you guys know each other. Yeah. It's yeah. just through, I mean, it's through conversation. Known, he's, we vibe because we're both from New York. We understand the mentality. And boom, we just click like that. Hmm. But um, we'll 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 know each other in two weeks, though. Oh, that's cool. What's happening in two weeks? Well, in two weeks, uh, myself, Stephanie, and Chance will all be in New York, okay. and we got three three shows to for book signings. One one in the in the city, one in Brooklyn, and one in the Bronx. So we'll all three be there in New York for Chance and I will be home. So it's it's going to be cool. That's awesome. That's awesome. You know what? When we come back, I want you to spit that poem that you're talking about, that famous native tongue poem. I want you to uh, want you to recite that when we come back. I know the but other two. I know the other two. It would only be my here. part. Huh? No, say the whole thing. I want you to say the whole I thing. I can't because the, 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 the beauty of native tongue, which makes it so powerful, is uh, three different languages at the same time. You know what? So, you know, we'll do uh, spit another. I want you to spit another poem. Then one of your one of your favorites from from the book, which one actually which one is your favorite from the book? Because it's dedicated to a good friend of mine. Mm -hmm. um, one of my favorite poems in the book is Melt. Mm. Um, but I, I, you know, I could spit anything you want because. Yeah, you do it when we come back. When we come back, you let's, let's do Melt. Let's, uh, do, let's do that. Let's get into it. Would you guys, let's get back in this countdown. The number nine song comes from Moonwalker. This song is called Lizzo. Let's get into it. Moonwalker Lizzo on Big Old Stop 20 Countdown. Yeah, you guys, we did a three in a row for you. We did Moonwalker Lizzo. Number eight was PZ with Two Million Up. Number two was Gorilla Tomorrow featuring Cardi B. And it's time to get into the independent song of the week. And you guys know that I cannot, cannot, cannot have one countdown at least with one of my songs on it. Come on, you guys. You know, that's the beauty of having your own countdown, music and your own countdown. But this song is the latest single. This song is called Cloud Nine. It was just premiered yesterday. Actually, it, no, actually, it's coming out today. Uh, let's get into it. Cloud Nine uh, by me on Big Ooh, Stop Pointing Countdown, Independent Song of the Week. Yeah, you guys, that was the Independent Song of the Week. We're talking to our guest, Midnight. He's getting ready to spit his poem. Uh, Melt, melt. Well, uh, I want to get the story behind this this poem before you even say it. Well, the the, the book is dedicated to a good friend of mine. Uh -huh. what, what, the the most platonic relationship I've ever had, and um, we had decided uh, on the fifty our fiftieth birthday that we would go to New York for a Broadway play. Okay. She passed sixteen days before her fiftieth birthday. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. But um, the book is the book is dedicated to her. Okay. Wow, that's beautiful. Yeah. That's and because I still stay in contact with her daughters, and I, I ask their blessing to dedicate the book to her. Okay. And so Melt is a poem about her centered. Because when her and I both met, we were both going through our divorce. So mm. we were like a support system to each other. Okay. And the the story behind Melt is, the setting behind Melt is the uh, the college she went to in North Carolina, Elon College. Okay. 
that whole that whole entryway of Elon College, that's where it melted. And, and I just, it's, it, I don't, I don't know if it's a powerful poem, mm -hmm. but it reminds me of my good friend. And it's just a, I think it's just a beautiful poem. It's just beautiful. It's simple, but it's beautiful, man. That's awesome. That's awesome. I can't wait to hear it. All right, here we go. <clears throat> Excuse me. The natural things that one would do, a kiss right there, a hug to let you know that someone cares. How is that not you? Would you welcome chivalry and an open chair, someone that will forever lend a listening ear? How does one reach you to melt your inner pains and worries, strengthen your desire to reach your goals, keep you safe and warm when you feel cold? Can someone melt you? Warm bricks underneath your feet at dusk, come share this gentle summer breeze. A walk in the park, kicking fallen leaves. Will you ever again share days like these? Tears of joy, laughter, and sorrow. But there, but there is another. But is there another shoulder to lean on? Not only for today and tomorrow. Will you find your once in a lifetime? Suffer with through all the hidden hard times. These words so beautifully done isn't really all about you. Most anything needs more than just one. So here's a question I address to you. Would you take a chance to melt me too? Yes, sir. Wow, I like that. That's really, really cool, man. Snap up, snap up, snap up, snap up. Wow, you're a poet, man. What yeah. other things that would you do you want to do besides poetry in the high school? Well, well, real quick, I just want to point this out. Go ahead. When I performed that piece, you can't see it because this particular picture is in black and white, but there mm. was a a mime that performed dance to that uh, piece that you just heard. Oh wow, that is so cool! Yeah, there was a, there was a mime that performed with it. That is, that is awesome, man! Wow, that is really cool. You doing it? Yeah, I love it. I love it. Oh, you you you. What made you get into social work besides the the poetry thing? Well, when, when, I, when I was in New York, I used to work for New York City Department of Probation. Okay. So, you know, it, it was always in me. <laughs> oh, okay. Initially, I wanted to be a lawyer, but that didn't work out. Hmm. Uh, and when I worked at the probation office, a lot of times I would go, when I go to lunch, I'd go to lunch and I'd run upstairs to the court and just watch the court cases, listen to the cases. It was, I don't know, I was just fascinated by it, you know? That's cool. That's cool. So then you decided to just, oh, okay, that is so cool. That's so cool. Are you are you here? I'm <laughs> not. <laughs> that's so cool. Expand on the story, man. I mean, and I mean that's pretty much it. And I just it it was always something I enjoyed working with the public. I mean, you get people, you get stories, trust. Yeah, uh, you get you get a lot of lies. You you get people that really want to flip the script and change their life around. Mm -hmm. and that's that's beauty. That's part of the beauty of it as well. So if you get one out of ten to flip their life around, it's like okay, cool, I did my job. That's awesome. That's awesome. But you know we're gonna get into this personal business a little bit later. But let's get back into this countdown. The number six song comes from Coyle Ray. This song is called Players Remix. Uh, I like this song because this song uses Busta Rhymes. Uh, so I'll put my hands where my eyes can see. Let's get into it. Number six, Coyle Ray, Players Remix on Big Old Stop 20 Countdown. Yeah, you guys, that was the number five song, Finesse Two Times with Back End. Now it's time to get to the old school jam of the week. This old school jam of the week, this brother will be four, the big four three tomorrow. And this is one of my absolute favorites. It's actually not really an old school. It's kind of like old, kind of new work a little bit. But this is uh, my boy, Craig David. This is one of his very first songs. This song was called Fill Me In. Let's get into it. The old school gem of the week, Craig David, Fill Me In on Big Old Stop 20 Countdown. Yeah, you guys, that was an old school gem of the week. Craig David would fill me in. Now it's time to get into our guest business. You know how I do it towards the end of the countdown. I, I lure you to a false oh. sense of professionalism. Now it's time to get into your business. What is what is the love look look like? You got a new boo thing? Are you single? What was going on, brother? The, the um, 
<laughs> I, I, you know what? It would take a lot uh -huh. for me to marry again. It, it would it would take a lot. Wow. And I mean, I'm I mean, I'm in my mid 50s, so I'm I'm a little stuck in my ways too. You know how that go. <laughs> I understand. I understand. I'm not 50 yet, but I know exactly what you mean, you know. Yeah, so and I only got a I technically, technically speaking, I only got six and a half, seven years before I retire. So they're like, yo, I'm I'm cool. Yeah. I'm cool. Yeah. So you just you just hanging out by yourself. Yeah, I mean, I I, I do hang out with different people, you know, which is cool, but I don't I don't have to I, we hang out and whatnot. Yeah, <laughs> your words. I understand. Yeah, I mean, there. I think the owner, the ownership part of pe some people's mentality. Yeah, I, I'm not a fan of that, Jack. I'm with you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm with you. Been there, done that. Yep. yep, yep. Somebody, some people take partnership and flip it into ownership, and you lost mm -hmm. me on that. I'm with you. I'm with you on that. I'm with you. I'm a free spirit. You know, you got your free spirit. Yeah. I'm with I'm with you on that. I'm definitely with you on that. I agree with you, brother. Come on now. Just because I'm with you one right now don't mean I'm gonna be with you, you know? Yeah, yeah. I, and, and 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 that doesn't mean I have to be wild and out. That's right. That's right. It, it, it doesn't mean I'm wild and out, but you know, I just and then because I do a lot of shows, I do a lot of performance shows and performances that that's usually later in the evening later at night you know th that person would have to understand the the audience they they have to understand my passion and if, right. if you're taking my passion away from me what what do i got to give back to you it's going to drain me that's true and, I, and it's not like i don't want to give back to you but i i won't have the strength or the peace to give you because i'm not doing what i love you're right about that. You're right about that. Wow, that's deep. That is some deep stuff, brother. Wow, that's deep. That's deep. You said it, but uh, you said your business, but without telling everybody your real business. But okay, I got you. <laughs> I got you. I got you. But you know what? Um, let's do like a. I want you have a minute to take something like really, really inspirational. Some something you really want to tell some some people. Some inspiration. You got a minute. And if you get past me, I go like this. Say whatever uh, you want to say. You, you, you gonna take my signature move? Anyway, <laughs> uh, inspiration. I, inspiration is hard. The mm -hmm. because there's no perfect words to tell anyone. Because mm -hmm. you know what, what I what I would say to one person, it won't apply to the next person. True. But the I I think, for example, doing doing this book. Mm -hmm. you the only person that really wants to see your dream come true is you it's true they they're they're not somebody will support you mm -hmm. but they're not they're not going to be passionate about it as as much as you will be that's true so the or or another thing i'd like to think about is that if um if for example if you Okay. If you write some, if you think about it, okay, it's a dream. Yes. If you write it down, it becomes a goal. That's right. So sometimes you have to, you have to write down what's it all for, or whatever. For example, in, my, in on my bathroom mirror, mm -hmm. I wrote on the titles of other book, the other books I want to write. And so, boom, it's still there. So when I my goal is to erase erase that that title from from that mirror. I'll write it down. Yeah, you write it down it becomes a goal. You know, I'm brushing my teeth every day, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna see that every day. I'm like, doggone, I'm tired of looking at this. I better I better get on it. That's right. Yeah, That's but I mean, if you think about it, it's a dream. You write it down, it becomes a goal. That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome man i appreciate it, man that was freaking awesome 
But you guys gonna get we're gonna uh, talk more to our guests, but let's get back in this countdown. The number four song comes from Drake and 21 Savage. This song is called Rich Flex. Let's get into it. Rich Flex by Drake and 21 Savage on Big Old Stop 20 Countdown. Yeah, you guys, we did uh Drake and 21 Savage, Rich, Rich Flex. Number three was SZA with shirt. Number two was Little Uzi Vert with Just Wanna Rock. And the number one song is by a person. He's gonna be He's going to be uh, 34, 34, 34 tomorrow. He's a wild, he's a wild child. We call him wild, but he has some really great music. This is by none other than Chris Brown. And this song is called Under the Influence. Let's get into it. The number one song, Chris Brown with Under the Influence on Big Old Stop 20 Countdown. Yeah, you guys, that was the number one song, Chris Brown, Under the Influence. And Chance, I, 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 I'm going to call you Chance. You oh, <laughs> blasphemy. Blasphemy. Oh. <laughs> midnight how can people get in touch with you um on ig is midnight poet zero zero that's that's the easiest way to uh get in touch with me uh that's the easiest way because i i, I kind of to some degree i separate facebook and ig okay because wow. facebook is you know more personal family and all that good stuff. Beautiful. Yeah. You know, if, if somebody tries to connect me on Facebook, I, I, I'll accept them. I, I ain't got no qualms like that. Yeah. But as far as for the arts, I always go to IG. That's awesome. That's awesome. I want to say thank you to our guest Midnight for coming on. Um, and I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you to all the stations that are carrying us. Uh, Vibe Hits Radio, uh, the Block FM, and recently, reunited with the show that started us off six years ago and that was uh kill radio and also want to thank spotify everybody and also want to thank every single listener you guys have helped me make it to our seventh season and this is our 269th show Do you believe that? wow 269th show we're so grateful that you guys are still here and if you guys want to reach me it's www.linktree.com backslash olu S H E Y I dot banjo. And the thought for the week keep going higher and you will reach your goal. And we always end this with a gospel song. And the, some, for some reason, this song has been seriously in my head. Let's get into it. The gospel song of the week comes from the legendary, uh, late great Whitney Houston. This song is called Jesus Loves Me. Let's get into it. Jesus Loves Me by Whitney Houston on Big Old Stop 20 Countdown. May God bless you. May God keep you until we meet again. And that's it. Mm-hmm.